Hello, I'm Dr. John Picton, and in this equity short, I'm talking about Leighton Markey and Cooper, which flows from the divorce of hedge fund manager Chris Cohn and his former wife, Jamie Cooper. The divorce made the news, as you can see from the picture in The Guardian, but the case is not about the divorce itself. It's about their jointly run charity. That charity was the Children's Investment Fund Foundation. It still exists, it's an absolutely major, extraordinarily wealthy charity, but now it's just Chris Cohn's charity. As part of their divorce settlement, Cohn and Cooper agreed that Cooper would stand down from the board of directors. This wasn't a charitable trust, it was a charitable company. And so that's not something we've seen in our course which of course is a, a trust's course. Cooper would stand down as long as the Children's Investment Fund Foundation paid over a grant of 360 million to a new charity, since named Big Win Philanthropy, that she had founded. This wasn't as straightforward as it might appear. The transfer because it was a charitable company, required a member of the company, Marco Leitimaki, to vote for the transfer. And he refused to vote for the transfer. The question for the Supreme Court was whether he could be made to pay over the money. All the judges agreed that Marco Leitimaki could be made to vote for the transfer. But there was a dispute about how he could be made to do so. Lord Briggs and all the other judges, so Lord Briggs and the majority, said that Marco Leitimaki was in breach of a fiduciary duty. Fiduciary duties are rules of good conduct. Here, Lord Briggs and the majority said, Marco Leitimaki was bound by a duty to further the purposes of the charitable company. The decision of Lord Briggs and the majority then is quite striking. It means that the court can say that a member has a duty to vote in a certain way. And if he does not vote in that way, then he will be in breach of his duty to further the purposes of the charity. Lord Briggs, though, was clear that there'd be no punishment for Marco Letimaki. If he did not vote how he was directed, he would just be removed from his position as a member of the charity. Like all the best cases, there's a judicial disagreement. Here, Lady Arden is alone in the minority. She said that Marco Letimaki could be compelled to vote, but she says so for the simple reason that the court has a general jurisdiction over charities. Although it should be reluctant to do so, it can interfere in the workings of charities. And it's because it had that power to interfere in the workings of charities that it could compel Marco Letimaki to vote. Lady Arden says that this power to force the vote in a certain way was not a matter of fiduciary duties. She thought it was wrong in principle for judges to say precisely how a fiduciary duty should be carried out. For Lady Arden, with regard to fiduciary duties, all a judge can do is, someone, is say that someone has a duty to behave in a certain way, that is, they have a duty of good faith, a duty to further the purposes of a charity, and then it is up to the person who is subject to the duty to decide how they should carry out that duty. Put another way, Marco Letimaki, so thinks Lady Arkin, 
could legitimately believe himself to be acting to further the purposes of the charity when he refused to make the transfer, and that would be fine. Fiduciary duties, so said Lady Arden, shouldn't be used as a way of forcing members to vote. She's in the minority, Lord Briggs is in the majority, and the case is a clear precedent that fiduciary duties can be used in order to force a member to vote in a certain way. From a charity law perspective, the case is interesting for a phrase used by Lady Arden. She talks of charity law as a mosaic. On a trust course, like our own, for obvious reasons, we look just at trusts, and they're still the most important contribution to charity law. But there are other areas of law relevant to the mosaic. Here we're talking about a charitable company, and so you can see that company law is relevant to this mosaic. The case leaves us with some problems. The first question is how does this apply to members of large charities? Are they bound by a duty to further the purposes of a charity and can they be compelled to vote in a certain way? Think for example of members of the National Trust. They might join the National Trust for freebies and discounts. Can they really be expected to vote against their own interests and what's more be compelled to vote against their own interests? Another question is how far members can contract out of their duty to further the purposes of the charity. Lady Arden took the view that they could alter the constitution of the charity and effectively just contract out of certain duties. So those National Trust members could contract out of their duty to further the purposes of the charity and vote in their own self-interest. That would be part of the mosaic. Contract law, trust law and company law. Both these questions remain open for a later court. That is, how far this case applies to large charities and how far can members just contract out of their fiduciary duties by changing the constitution.